Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, I'm in the studio. We're live. You know what to do by now. Get involved in the comments and the chat and hit that like button as well. We're going to be going through all the latest Manchester United news. Some of it focusing on the takeover. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Jay, no, man, the takeover. I'm sick of it. It's been never ending. I feel your pain, but it's my job to tell you what is being reported. So we're going to go through the latest takeover news stories. Also, a little bit about Jaden Sancho. I know what you're thinking about that one as well. You're thinking, oh, Jay, not more Jaden Sancho news. But as always, there's a bit of a development there. So we'll get into that. And also, there's a quirky little Eric Cantona story. But most importantly, you lot, yes, you lot, need to get involved and let me know what is going on. Hit that like button and get involved in the chat. Um, Kelk Vots says GGMU. Uh, Cameron Doyle says Jay, the hardest working man on YouTube. Ross Wheeler says morning Jay, UTP, morning Ross. Morning Santa Notch, morning Lee Elliott, morning Remy Philly. Um, morning Phobos Taco Man, morning, morning um, Kelk Watts, Jacoya Trot, Alan B. Um, Rusty Sawblade says, can't believe you wimps out of standing outside OT. It's lovely out. I've, yeah, do you know what? I missed all that this morning. I got in here just in time to, to miss the, the, the downpour that is uh, ensuing. I've just seen people coming in who were absolutely soaked. It's morning when people walk in when they're soaked and someone goes, is it raining outside? That would wind me up, that. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, Ratcliffe's proposal. Should we talk about this? Man United takeover. Sir Jim Ratcliffe proposes three-person football committee with him, Joel Glazer, and Sir David, or Sir Dave, Brailsford. Yep, yeah, so this is a story about how this control of the football inside or the sport inside of things is going to look under Sir Jim Ratcliffe's ownership. Well, it's not really his ownership, it's his 25% stake. It says Sir Jim Ratcliffe is expected to purchase 25% of Manchester United for 1.3 billion quid. The deal would give the Ineos owner control of football operations, plus a say in the commercial side, controlled by the Glazer family. Man United are not expected to be busy in the January window. See, this is so contradictory to all these stories because the other day we were hearing we are going to be busy in the January transfer window. He wants to do something in the January transfer window. And also it makes a bit of a statement like, I'm coming in here, things are going to be different, everything's going to be great. Here's a shiny new signing to get everyone on board. And now we're hearing we're not going to be doing anything in the January transfer window or very little. Slightly concerning. I think with January, a lot of it depends where you are. Because last season, one of my biggest bugbears, and forgive me if you've fed up with me going on about this because I go on about it all the time but it absolutely infuriates me last season going into the January window we were in a battle for top four we were not I think we were nine points off the top right so realistically not in a title race but stranger things had happened if you'd have actually maybe gone for it in the January transfer window I'm not saying you could have won the league but maybe you could have got yourself involved in that conversation you were still in the FA Cup Sorry, I don't think the FA Cup started, so you're still in it. And you're in the latter stages of the Carabao Cup. I think we might have been around the semi-final stage of the Carabao Cup or whatever. Still in Europa League. So you're fighting on four fronts. And you know you are threadbare in certain departments or certain positions, sorry, departments like with some sort of office conglomerate. In certain positions, we were down to bare bones. Our leading goal scorer had left. He'd left after the summer, Cristiano Ronaldo. So we needed strengthening. We needed a new striker. Anthony Martial kept getting injured. So what did the board do? They said to Eric Tadang, well, you can have a new striker, you just can't spend any money. How are you meant to get a free striker or a striker on loan in January who's good enough to help you fight on those four fronts? Now, Eric Tadang did what he could. He got Volt Vegost. Now, Volt Vegost, he ran a lot, he put the effort in, he got the best out of Marcus for a little while, he scored a couple of goals, literally, but he was never good enough to play for Manchester United week in, week out, realistically. And I'm not knocking a kid, he just wasn't. You can't get a striker who's not good enough to play for Burnley in the Championship and expect him to be good enough for Manchester United Football Club. That is just insane. Plus, you had Marcel Sabitzer, who's a decent signing, come from uh, Bayern Munich. But again, it's another loan signing, that's all you can do. To be fair, he got injured, which no one could have foreseen. It's not like he was a, um, sort of injury prone. But it just baffled me, the way that that was how we did our business in January. Where had we gone out and spent some real money and got a big name striker in, or not even the name matters, someone who could contribute goals in the Premier League, could have been a different story. It could have been a different story in that FA Cup final, genuinely. If we'd have had a different striker, someone who was capable of lightening the load from Marcus, because it was all about Marcus Rashford last season. We were too reliant on him. So, yeah, it really annoyed me. So, going into this January window, a lot depends where we're at. 
if, God forbid, Rasmus Hoyland gets injured, are we not going to buy a striker? We're not going to go in the market for one. And if you are getting a striker, you're not going to spend money because you cannot get strikers on the cheap. Not decent ones anyway. Certainly not good enough to challenge at the top of the Premier League, which is where Manchester United should be. So it worries me, this story and these re reports that we're not going to do anything in January. I think you need to look at where you're at. If in January you've got a full strength squad and, you know, you're, I don't know, comfortably in the top four, you're out of the cups, then you might go, well, OK, we don't necessarily need to buy anyone. We're, we're only in one competition. The squad's all fighting fit. We're all good. But the chances of that are slim. You might be fighting on different fronts. You might be a bit light in some positions. So it just annoys me this idea that we're already going, oh, well, we're not going to do anything in January. Wait and see what happens. Uh, Meta United uh, 88 says, what's your prediction for the game this weekend? I'm trying not to be too OTT with my predictions. I think me and McCullough had six and seven nil or something, but that was a bit tongue in cheek. So I think it might be tighter than we think. I think it might be a closer game than we expect because Sheffield United have been woeful this season. Um, producer Ethan's team, Newcastle, was it 8-0? Battered them at Bramall Lane. I think that was it. Bramall won it that one. So they got battered 8-0 off Newcastle. They have, I think, got one point all season. They're, just, they're already looking like they're doomed. But you can't take it for granted. And we've had a lot of players playing in the national break, doing well in the national break. That can go two ways. Some of those players can be a little bit knackered whereas Sheffield United have, might, might be a little bit more rested. I'm not trying to make excuses because we should be beating Sheffield United, but I think it might be more 1-0 or 2-0 rather than the 6-7-0 and 7 me and McCullough were predicting yesterday. Um, right, let's have a look here um, what the comments are saying. Stephanie Griffiths makes a great point. She always makes a great point. Get those likes up, people, please. Hit that like button. Um, Daniel Berry says, Jasim didn't offer $5 billion. He offered $4 billion. You know my thoughts on the whole Jasim thing. I personally... I'm moving on from it. He ain't buying Manchester United, so I'm moving on for it. I get people still want to discuss it. Daniel Fullard says, Glazer on that committee, about as useful as hair gel for Jay. Fair fair po point. I've not used hair gel in weeks. Um, Santa Notch says, January transfer window depends on the budget the previous summer. If no money, that's it. That's how it works with these owners. That might be it, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You should be able to accommodate if you're in a different situation. If you had a mad injury run where loads of players are dropping and loads of players just aren't fit and you go in in January and go look we've lost like seven players on long term injuries we're, we're, we're in real trouble you should be able to find the funds for January transfer signings you just should I just don't buy into the idea that I know Santa's making a point sorry not just making a point that it's these owners but it's just not good enough um, should we talk about Jaden Sancho because the Jaden Sancho saga and it is a saga and I want to get everyone's thoughts on this because there was a time, right, when Jaden Sancho, where I think he had a lot of sympathy. I think people were like, mm, I feel sorry for the kid. Last season, I was at Old Trafford when he came back from having that three-month training regime, or whatever you want to call it, in the Netherlands. And everyone was giving him, he got a great reception. He did, his name was getting chanted. Everyone was cheering for him. He came on, he did well. It was like, yeah, this is, you know, this is what you like to see. You like to see the crowd getting behind a player. And I think everyone was very, very supportive, including the manager. I think the manager was supportive of Jaden Sancho. This season, we've had this fallout, haven't we? We've had the whole Arsenal game where the manager came out and he said he wasn't, he didn't train well enough or whatever it was, I'm paraphrasing, but basically said that he hadn't been putting the work in in training. So he decided to drop him for the Arsenal squad. Jaden Sancho then comes out and he does his Twitter post, doesn't he, where he's like, mm, I'm a scapegoat these are lies and all this sort of stuff. You can't do that against your manager, right? You just can't. Whether you believe that or not, if you do a social media post like that, you are pretty much doomed, I think, anyway. Then he deleted it a few days later. It was up for quite a while. It felt like a while anyway. Then he's had this meeting with Tanag where he's refused to apologise. We had a story yesterday that his teammates are telling him to apologise. We also had these stories coming out. Do you remember when there was a story about how Jaden Sancho wasn't happy or Eric Ten Hag might have said something he shouldn't have said when he referred to Jaden Sancho's mental well-being? That seems to be a whole, you know, nothing burger, as they say. Nothing came of that. Then you had other stories coming out that Jaden Sancho was a bit of a problem at Borussia Dortmund in terms of his timekeeping, and that has carried on at United. 
keeps missing meetings or being late. He's always late for training. They have to tell him to get there an hour earlier than he's meant to get there, and he's still late sometimes. I mean, there's also these reports, stories, rumours, whatever you want to call them, of him playing FIFA till daft the clock in the morning. There was screenshots doing the rounds of him playing or, you know, logging on or whatever it is. I mean, you can sound like a like, granddad, don't I? Logging on or whatever it is and playing on his joystick. Of being on FIFA late at night, like the Nate, his his account being on FIFA or whatever, online late at night. Someone screenshotted and said, this is Jaden Sancho. He's playing FIFA at three o'clock in the morning or whatever, which is obviously a bit of an issue. Then we hear new stories about the fact that he's got a train on his own or he's training, I think, with the academy, but he has to lock the doors when he's getting changed because these are all underage kids, so he can't get changed with him. It just sounds proper messy, doesn't it? Now... I do feel a little bit sorry for Jaden Sancho because it's not nice to have to train on your own to go for all this. But a big part of this, or a big part of me, feels like he's brought a lot of this on himself. He should have apologised. We should have moved on. And I don't think Jaden Sancho has been a good signing for Manchester United. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limit. It's not even out on a limb. I'm going to say he's been a disastrous signing for Manchester United. He's been an absolutely shocking signing for us. I'm not saying he hasn't got ability. He has. He has got ability. He's got what 36 goal involvements was it in 39 games in his last season in Germany? We've seen moments from him the goal against City in the derby his performance against Leeds for example but he's just not been a good signing 70 odd million quid for a player who's done next to nothing really really and truly what has he done in the Manchester United shirt bits and pieces but nothing great and the amount of dramas we've had you had the three months whatever last season I'm not blaming him if he needed to get himself right for whatever reason whether that was mentally or physically fine I get it but it is a bit rare for a player to miss a big chunk of the season when he's not got an injury that is quite rare that happened though fine i get it comes back and now he's missed another chunk of the season because of this fallout and now he's had this big drama with the manager where it's got to be a distraction i'm sorry it can't not be a distraction eric tonight's getting asked about it at press conferences Jaden sancho is friends with some of these squad players he is or squad players sorry some of the squad we saw him on um I think it was on Instagram with Aaron wan at a party. We know him and Marcus Rashford have been close. That's got to affect them a little bit. If you see your mate being sort of ostracised or you see him having a fallout with your boss, it's got to put you in a bit of a difficult position. I just I can't imagine they can just ignore all that. I know Aaron wan is not playing at the minute, but I've got to imagine that that's got to be quite difficult for Marcus Rashford as well. And I just feel like it's become a massive, massive drama. For what? What, what is the payoff? Sometimes you have dramas with players, right? And it's worth it because the player is a massive asset to Manchester United. So in 2008, when Cristiano Ronaldo had his little, I don't know what you can call it, episode about being at Manchester United and being a slave and all this other nonsense, Fergie sort of worked hard to keep him at the club for another year and convince him to stay. And it was worth it because we won a title that year and we got to the Champions League final. And we won, then we got 80 million for, quid for him anyway. So it's not like he was massively devalued by it waiting another year. But it was worth the drama because of the player. When Eric Cantona climbed into the stands at Sellers Park and kicked races him out of football, it was worth United sticking by him because he's one of the greatest players who's ever put a football shirt on. And he helped deliver the double in his first season back and another title in his last season. So it was well worth the headache with Jadon Sancho, I don't think it is. Is any of this worth it? Is it really? There was a story during the rounds that he um, he he doesn't want to go out on a permanent deal. He wants to go on a, a loan deal because he's been linked with Dortmund. He's been linked with Juve. But apparently he doesn't want to go to those clubs or he doesn't want to go to a club permanently. He wants to go on a loan deal. And he'd rather, you can see it on the, in the mirror, that he'd rather go on loan. And there's even rumours that he wants to wait and see what happens with a manager because he thinks a new manager might come in. If the manager gets sacked and the manager might rate him, you can't operate like that. And I honestly think Manchester United need to just cut our losses. We're never going to get anywhere near the 73 million quid we paid for him. We're just not. You don't get that for a player who's done next to nothing for two and a half seasons or two and a bit seasons. It says here, Manchester United manager Eric Tenag has plans to offload Jadon Sancho in the January transfer window, but the forward would prefer a low move rather than a permanent exit. That's his prerogative, yeah. He, he might like that. He might want that. But I just feel from the club's point of view, just move him on, man. Permanent deal. Get rid. Seriously. Because it's just become a big, big drama. Get involved in the comments in the chat. You may disagree with me. You may feel for Jaden Sancho. You may think, like, come on, Jay. 
this isn't this isn't right the way he's been treated. There's another story. Did we do, we've not done the team photo one, have we? Sorry, I skipped the story there, Eve. There's this story as well that he's been omitted from the Manchester United team squad photo. They had a squad photo and he wasn't in it, which again isn't great. But I go back to my original point. I can't help but feeling like he brought a lot of this on himself. I just feel like that. I just feel that his actions have done that. And I also feel like he's not been worth all this either. Let me know what you think. Because I don't like hammering the kid. I don't. But I've got to be honest. I'm not going to come on here and pretend. This is an MUTV as well. We're not going to come on here and just say nothing. We as a channel, I think every presenter on here and every contributor on, on it has pretty much been supportive and back Jaden Sancho. We wanted United to sign him. We stuck with him. We like him. I think he is a good player, but he's just not done it in a United shirt. And now I'm at the point where I think this is becoming a massive issue. Really do. Let me know what you think. Daniel Berry says, Dortmund knew it. Mo V says, I'm tired of player. Uh, Jay Frasconi in the Super Chat says, good morning, Jay. Jay? Jay? Should know my own name. If Sir Jim does anything at all, I hope it is to get someone in as director of football that can work with Eric Arc and improve the transfer business. Buy and sell wisely, wisely and for value. Uh, yeah, good point. Brian Casey says, Sancho earning 250k a week and feels he doesn't need to train as hard as anyone else. Pure entitlement. Any fan would play for the club for free. It would be an honour to put on the jersey. Listen, I understand that and I would. I'd pay to play for Manchester United. I don't mind players getting paid a massive wage if that's what they're offered. That's not their fault. That's the club's fault. I know Brian's not saying it is this fault, but if the club are going to pay you a huge amount of money, you're going to take it in any walk of life, any job, your boss or your employer says, here's your wages. You're never, ever going to go, that's too much, that. Lower it a bit because I'm, I'm, you know, you, you pay me too much. Jaden Sancho got offered a massive wage and he took it. Don't blame him. The club overpaid for him and overpaid for, for his wages. You can argue, actually, for his transfer, it wasn't as grim as it sounds because I think he was his star was so high that it made sense to pay that kind of fee for him. But the wages, yeah, were, were massive. So I understand the frustration people have when you see what he's earning and the fact he doesn't even want to play anymore. Um, Stuart Summer says, damn late again. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, I'll let you off. Who are you, Jaden Sancho? Hey. Uh, Matt Wick says, oh, right, sorry, he's chatting to someone else. Um, Mike Bermitt says, whatever happens, United need to make him sign an NDA so he doesn't spread a load of unverified rubbish about Tenag, which could damage the club and future signings. Good point. Yeah, he might have to have a bit of that. Might need to have a little old NDA there. Non what is it? A non-disclosure agreement, is it? Um on a tangent, it's completely irrelevant to that. Has anyone seen the Wagatha Christie thing? On, I think it's on Disney Plus. The story of Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy. It's a documentary about it, and they've got like access to Colleen and to Wayne Rooney. It tells a story of the whole. It's Rebecca Vardy. The whole that story. Um, it was yeah. It, it's amazing. It wasn't even it's Rebecca Vardy, was it? It was it. It's Rebecca Vardy's account. I think that was the the line that she used. Yeah. If you if you can watch it, watch it. Honestly, it's it's mint. It really is. I can't recommend it enough. You might be like, Jay, no one cares about two wags arguing. Trust me, it's gold. Uh, right. Let's talk about Eric Cantona because I've had enough depressing stories. Uh, Eric Cantona here says the sing the singer says the Rolling Stones should support me. Eric's being a singer. He's he's be um he's started uh, he's going on tour singing. I, do you know what? I love Eric Cantona. We met him once during the World Cup. Adam McCullough, who I will never for, forget for this, invited me along with him to go and meet Eric Cantona at this like event where you got to watch a football match with him. And it was mad because like, Chris Kamara and Harry Redknapp and um, what's his name? Uh, Big Nasty and all them lot were there. And it was just crazy. It was in London, in this house in London. And Eric was there and I got to, to, to meet Eric Cantona. And I was, honestly, I couldn't get over it. I just wanted to stand near him. Just wanted to smell him, and he smelled lovely as well. Um, so yeah, he's becoming a he's becoming a singer now, and he's going on tour. So he's he's been given an interview for this, and he says, "I always had this dream to go on stage and be front of people because the show is something that we make together. The audience, if they are in a good mood or bad mood, we all use the energy of each other. These twenty tracks he's got an album out are, were built to be on stage. It's why I wanted to do a live album first. It will be finished like the last touch on a painting. So his his album's coming out." And it's a live album. He's just Ace Eric. I don't care what anyone says. I love this. He's an actor. He's a painter. He's a singer. Do you know what I mean? He's just, he's just, there'll never be another footballer like Eric Cantona. And any success United have in the Premier League era can be traced back to us signing Eric Cantona. He was the catalyst for everything. He really was. Absolute legend. For me, the GOAT. I will not have it any other way. Just the greatest. Um, 
Get involved in the comments in the chat. Let us know what you think. Renato Tello, who's been a member of the Academy for a month, says, up the paddock, F the Glazers, long live the Red Devils. Well said. Um, Stephanie Griffey says, Canana is God. Uh, Jacoya Trot says, we just love Canana. Um, Ed says, he's the Will Smith of football, minus the crazy wife. No, he's not. What are you on about? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, Andy Bryan says, did you see Mount answering questions about the number seven shirt? I feel he needs a big goal against City or the, the Scousers for fans to truly take to him. That would help. A big goal in one of those games for Mason Mount. I feel like Mason Mount's getting there, you know. I think we've seen it over the last few games. There's been sort of spells in the game, like 10, 15, 20 minute spells where he's really come into his own. I'm hoping... He's getting there gradually. It might be a bit of a slow burner at Manchester United. It's happened in the past. Some players do take a little while to get going. And we know he has got qualities and the manager obviously wanted him for a reason. So, fingers crossed he can start kicking on and hopefully he can do it on Saturday against Sheffield United. We'll be here on Saturday for the watch-along. I'll be here with myself and Abdullah doing the watch-along. We're going to have Scotty as well on half-time. Plus, you'll be here from Andy Tate. So, make sure you join us. If you're not doing already, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're hitting that like button as well. Give us a like. And have I read all the Super Chats? Yeah, I think I have. Um, I'll be back later on. I've got The Brew with Stephen Housen and a special guest as well. So don't miss out on that. I've been Jay Moy. This has been The Paper Talk. Thanks for watching.